welcome, welcome to Midday with LaJean and Melora. Blessings to you guys. Just Contessa, thank you for coming on. God bless you, Angel Sumler. Blessings to you all the way from Jacksonville. Yes, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will certainly be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. We can bless the Lord every day, all day. Um, as David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. I will make my boast in him and the humble shall hear thereof and they shall be glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you glad today? Hallelujah. Well, come on, please share as you come on, invite your followers. God bless you. Thank you, for uh, Patricia B., for inviting me to followers. God bless you guys. We are doing well. God is faithful. Amen. We are excited about your life, about what God is doing. Amen. This is the year of fulfillment of God's word. This is the year of payback. Amen. This is the year of restitution. That God is giving you more than what the devil thought he stole out of your life. So we're excited um, about today. Thank you so much for continuing to pray, not just for us, but one for another. Amen. God has called us to stand in the gap on behalf of others, to intercede, to make up the hedge. And uh, we're seeing great results. Amen. Great, great results. Letting you know that your prayers are not in vain. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. So again, welcome, welcome. We're excited to be with you guys on this afternoon. It's a beautiful day in Tampa, Florida. So I'm not sure where you all are from. In Norfolk, Virginia, blessings to you. We're excited. <laughs> Well, you know, we're not going to be on long today, but I did want to, um, I thought about my wife's message from yesterday, and her message, um, she, I've ministered about two weeks ago, uh, and I was talking about how this was still the year of fulfillment, God was still going to fulfill what he said that he was going to fulfill, and so in the process, she talked about uh, this is going to be a makeup season. So you can go to our actual church website, www. or not the website, but to the church Facebook page, and you can see her message from yesterday. Um, but you can actually also, can you tell them a little bit about what, when you said that it really like struck a chord? So you said God was going to give people makeup blessings. So, mm -hmm. so help, help me understand that. Um, one of the things, many times we look at uh, God restore, restore the years, restore different things in our life. And so restitution means that God is not just going to restore, but he's going to give you more than what you lost. And so God is going to make up for lost time. He's going to make up for things that you didn't have or things that you lost or things that the enemy came and, and stole out of your life, whether it's your passion, whether it's your family, whether it's your finances. God said, I'm going to make up for the lost time. I'm going to make up for those tears. I'm going to make up for the times that you, you you felt burdened. And many times what happens is even as you can probably attest to at the beginning of the year, we were really excited. We were pumped and it's a new year. It's a new start. You have a new vision. And then somewhere along the line through trials and just through life itself, we sometimes become passive more than active. We don't pray as much as we used to pray sometimes because we're tired and we're worn and the enemy has fought us. The enemy has come even as he does, as the word of God says, that he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he came uh, in violently to steal from you. And, and so what happens is we, we've become so passive because we've gone through so many things and the enemy will tell us that you deserve it. This is the reason. The reason why you're going through this, the reason why this happened to you is because of what you did or uh, what you didn't do and God is angry at you. So then we, we become more passive and we don't fight. We don't get up and we don't progress because we're, we're thinking, okay, this is my plight. And we begin to say, oh, well. Um, and, and so one of the things that God was saying is, is you've got to go back. You've got to go into the enemy's um, warehouse and you've got to take what naturally belongs to you as your covenant right, as being a child of God, as being a blood-bought believer, as being redeemed from the curse of the law. You've got to go back and take it. You've got to go back, amen, and, and understand your right and your benefits. There is a benefit in being a, a child of God. He healeth you of all of your diseases. He forgiveth you of all of your iniquities. He satisfies your mouth with good things that your youth may be renewed like the eagles. And so um, David understood that. And 
so God is saying, I'm making up. I'm making up for lost time. I'm making up for the things that, the days that you didn't have peace, the days that you were burdened, the days that you were frustrated, the days that you um, uh, felt like giving up, the days when you wanted to end it all. God said, I'm going to make up for those days because as, a, as my son and as my daughter, the enemy didn't have a right. He didn't have a legal right to attack and to take what did not even belong to him. Mm. Amen. And so when the enemy is found out, when you understand who your real enemy is, because your enemy is not your brother and your sister, your enemy is not your neighbor, your enemy is not your co-worker, but there is a real enemy that we are fighting and his name is Satan. Wow. Yes, yes. And so we have to know that he comes and he takes what does not belong to him. He takes. And, and so one of the things that God was sharing with us um, on yesterday is that you've got to go back and get the unused authority that God gave to you that we did not walk in. In those times when we just sort of just let things happen, we just sort of say, you know, oh, well, it just it is what it is. No, God is saying, go get your power back. Go get your authority back. Go get your peace back. Go get your son and your daughter back. Go get them back. Amen. Because the, the, the enemy, see what he does, he steals from us and then he laughs about it. You, you know, he laughs about it. And see, the enemy doesn't just stop at stealing. He, he's not concerned with just stealing from you. No, he, he wants to kill you and he wants to destroy your destiny. He wants to destroy your family makeup. He wants to destroy your business. So he's not just concerned about stealing from you. His, his plan is so much bigger than stealing, mm. but he wants to literally destroy you. And so when you understand how he has come in and, and the attack that has been against your life and against your family and against your marriage, you've got to, again, get angry at the devil. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. So he's the real enemy. He's the real enemy. Absolutely. And he'll make it seem like everybody else is the enemy. And sometimes we fall for the okie doke. Amen. We fall for it. And sometimes we just give up. Sometimes we, we don't, we're not forceful in, in our prayer. We don't really travail. We don't really hit that thing. And so God is saying, you've got to go back. I've given you the power. I've given you the authority. And so you've got to go back and you've got to take back what belongs to you. You know, and he, we, we, and I was thinking about this not long ago that you know the situation with OJ Simpson you know whether he was guilty or not in that in that other situation but then he he was he um, the, I think one of the main reasons why he went to prison is because he went and, and he said he was taking back his stuff that people had come in and stolen his stuff and it was rightfully his and so he went to take it back and so we've got to be at a point that we get angry at the devil Wow. And we go and take back. We take back our joy. We take back the money that he came to steal out of our life, you know? And so the things that you worked hard for. And many times what happens, we become so frustrated. We become so worn down because we work so hard and we don't have anything to show for it. Wow, that's good. Now, another thing you said was it was a bounce back season. Mm -hmm. So you said God it was a season God was going to send some makeup suddenness, makeup mm -hmm. blessings. Yes. And you also said it was a bounce back season. So bounce talk back. to me about that. Yeah, you're bouncing back. Let me tell you something. This message was yesterday was so on fire. <laughs> I'm telling you, this girl was on fire yesterday. But she always preaches with fire. So I appreciate that uh, about my wife. I mean, she is a fiery preacher. I'm a teacher. She's a preacher. So talk to us about the bounce back season. Yes, you're going to bounce back from depression. You're going to bounce back from loss. You're going to bounce back from bankruptcy. Uh, glory to God. You're going to bounce back from, from the trauma of your life and the things that, that held you captive. God said you're going to bounce back from those things that have held you back, that have stopped you from growing, that have stopped you um, from, from really getting to the place with God that you want to be. And so you, because in your heart, you, you said, God, I just want, I want you, God, I want to do what you called me to do. But because sometimes of loss, because of the things that it seemed like were taken from you, the things that you lost, whether it was your business that didn't go the way that you thought it would go, whether it was your marriage that ended abruptly, amen, and you said, my God, what happened? You know, we, we, we you know, we were the perfect couple and, you know, we, we loved God, we served God together and all of a sudden you're divorced or you're separated. He's doing his own thing and here you are left in a situation or she's doing her own thing and you're left in this situation. You say, God, how do 
I get from this place? How do I get to my next place? How do I get to the place, God, that you call me that I know is for me? God said, this is your bounce back season. You're going to bounce back into the place, into the fulfillment and the fullness of everything that God has called you to do. Mm, keep going, because that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that. uh, Kim Capey said, yeah, she's quiet and unassuming, but, but when the lion roars, it comes out. So come on, talk to us. Yes. Because I it, like this. It's, it's time. It's really, really time. No longer, we, we, we sometimes we think, okay, this is just my plight. This is what has happened to me. I had no control over it. Let me tell you, we do have control. We God has given us control. And so when we understand our position, when we understand the authority that God has given to us, now it does not mean that the enemy won't come. It does not mean that the, the weapon won't be formed. Those things will happen. And, and so what the enemy does, and he's calculated in how he operates. And so that's why we have to be so calculated. We have to, we have, to have a strategy, glory to God. So when the enemy laughs at us, we got to begin to laugh at the devil. Hey, glory to God. Because um, David said that, you know, in Psalms, it says that God, God laughs at the devil because he knows that his end is near. And so you got to begin to laugh at the devil. You got to let the devil know you can't have my stuff and I'm coming to get my stuff. Not only am I getting, and see, one of the things that I, I realized, even in as God was ministering to me about this particular thing, you know, restitution sometimes in certain dic dictionaries, it says that it's restored what was lost. But as I began to look at the law, um, lo look at it from a law perspective, not only is it what is lost, because see, that would just be easy. Amen. That would be easy. I'm, I'm talking about a God normous restitution. I'm talking about a God magnificent restitution where, where, according to the modern law is that not only is it what was lost, but it's how it made you feel. Mm -hmm. They got to pay you for, for every tear you cried. The devil has to pay you for the sleep that's nice. He's got to pay you for all of those things. So it's not a matter of what he stole out of your life, but it's all about how you felt about it. It's, it's about, it goes beyond that. It's, it, it is the collateral damage mm -hmm. that he's got to give you back more. If he stole one thing, he's got to give you back five things. And so if he, if if he took if he took some joy out of your life he's got to give you joy he's got to give you peace he's got to give you all of these different things and so because he has it stored up that's the thing it, your, your stuff has not left it has not left the earth. The devil has your stuff stored up. And so you got to go to his storehouse. You got to bind the strong man and you got to take back everything that he stole out of your life. Even if you say, you know what? Some things I don't even want back. Get it anyway. Amen. Get give it, it, away to give somebody it to somebody else. else. If you oh don't want God. it, give it to somebody else. But by all means, don't let the devil keep your stuff. Girl, let me tell you something. I'm going to give you an offer right after this. My God. Come yes. on, man. Yes. That's good. Yes. I, you know what? I've read that scripture many times because uh, you were really dealing with Job and how, and you were saying it was going to be his bounce back. And he came into yes. a bounce back season. A bounce and he back. also came back into a makeup season. Yes. God made up and he gave him double, double. for his trouble. Absolutely. Double for everything that he went through. Yes. That was powerful. Yes. That's powerful. Absolutely. How can you lose everything? How can you lose all of your children? How can you lose all of your possessions at the same time? And then your body comes under attack. Let me tell you something. Again, the enemy was not just about stealing from Job. No, he wanted to literally destroy Job. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill his legacy. He wanted to kill the testimony that he was about to give in chapter 42. So he did everything that he possibly could in chapter 1. My God, you got to understand that there was a chapter 42 coming into your life that God, you're going to testify of the goodness of God and how he restored double for your trouble. Mm. Tamara McNair, she said, don't leave anything behind. Don't leave nothing. nothing. Absolutely. Not even your stuff. You're going to get your grandmama stuff. You're going mm. to get your, your cousins and your auntie stuff that didn't have the strength to go back. Some of them went on to be with the Lord without receiving. And so you don't even want the devil to keep their stuff. Amen. You're going, you coming out with more than what you even ever imagined. But it's time to arise. It's time to walk in your purpose. It's time to use the power and the authority that God has given to you so that you, my God, it's time to arise. Amen. It's time to take back. Many times we sit back and say, Lord, do this. Lord, do this. And God can easily do it, but he's not going to do what he told you to do. And he's not going to let you do what only he can do. Amen. Wow. Amen. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna give you some spir- some, some scriptural precedents for this. Mm-hmm. I want for those of you who are looking. Of course, we can definitely use the story of Job. We look at Job chapter one and chapter two, and then chapter forty two when he mm-hmm. got double back. Yes. But I also love a scripture in First Samuel chapter thirty where David uh, David the enemy comes in and steals David. The Bible said he stole. Uh, he you know he stole his. Uh, what, uh, chapter 30, where we at, uh, matter of fact, verse 4. And it said, David and the people that were with him, you know, lifted up their voices and wept. Well, let's back up a little bit before that. Uh, chapter 30, verse number 1 and 2. And it said, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and taken captive the women and those who were with, who were there from great to uh, small to great. And uh, But they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So that's that, that lines up with what you're saying. They mm-hmm. could not kill stuff that belongs to you. They couldn't destroy it, but they could hold it and uh, and keep it. So, right. and anyway, so David and his men came to the city and there was burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then the people lifted up their voices and cried. And so then David, again, you know, begins to pursue God and he asked God, he says, shall I uh, pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And then God answers him and says, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without re- uh, fail recover all. And I really believe that that's what that bounce back season is about. Yes. It's a season of recovering all. It's a season of going back into the enemy's camp. And somebody will say, well, you don't go into the enemy's camp. No, God instructed David to go back into the enemy's camp and to recover all. And the interesting thing is, is that when you recover all, you don't just get back what you uh, what you sold into it. In this instance, <laughs> David got back more than what, he, what was stolen from yes. him. Because the Bible says if we go on down uh, and we get into... Um, what is it? Uh, verse number uh, 20. No, as a matter of fact, it was verse number right around 18. Uh, it says, so David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives and nothing of theirs was lacking, neither either small or great sons or daughters spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Then David took all the flocks and herds that they had driven before those of the livestock and said, this is David's spoil. And so uh, God is going to give you enough. And when God rec- When you recover all, it's not just going to be enough for you. It's going to be enough for you and for the other people that are connected to you. Uh, Because what David did when he came back, he didn't just get it. He didn't get enough for him. He got enough even for those who were weary. Mm -hmm. Because there are some people who are with you and God's going to give you the strength. Those of you that are watching, those of you who are listening, God's going to give you an anointing and he's going to give you the strength to be able to go and pursue the enemy. Everybody doesn't have the, the ability. Everybody doesn't have the tenacity. Everybody doesn't have the strength. Everybody doesn't have the anointing to go into to the enemy's camp and take that which belongs to him. But God yes. is going to anoint you to have the strength, even as he did for David. Yes. And he's going to release an anointing upon Jesus. you that allows Jesus. you to go back into the Come enemy's on. camp. Let me Jesus. tell you something. If you out of shape, you better get in shape because this is your this is your turnaround season. This is your take back season. It's your comeback take season. Come it's your season to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from you. It's the time. I know there's only 40 something days left in this year, but I'm telling you the year is not over yet. You can launch an attack and assault on the enemy's camp and remove everything that belongs to him and I'm telling you it's your season for that come on it's your season for your makeup blessings it's your season amen for you to go back into that storehouse and get everything that belongs to you everything with your name on it everything that 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 that, that, that you you know you go back and it's like if somebody breaks into your house and they steal your stuff and you go to the police to identify the stuff that belongs to you you got your name engraved on it you know the serial number you know the stuff that belongs to you you know it's yours and the enemy came in and took it, and he didn't have the authority to come in and take it, but the law has this interesting principle. Not only do you get your stuff back in recovery, but then they have to pay you. They have to give you restitution, and so as long as it takes them to pay you back for what they stole, not only what they stole, but also the damage that it was caused in the process. As my wife said, the emotional baggage, the emotional damage, all the stuff that 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 person took from you, it's your season to recover all. So you get ready. You get ready because your makeup blessing and God is making up for the relationships that yes. were messed up. Make, uh, uh, making up for all the time that you spent uh, crying, all the tears that your, that, that your pillows were wet with, all the other things. God is getting ready to cause Jesus. this to be. And I know it's late in the, in the year. It's late in the hour. It's late in your situation. But Job 42 and 10 is coming to your life. I'm telling you, there's a double coming for your trouble, a triple yes. for your trial. You've got to know that the God that we serve is able to do, even as his word says, yes. exceeding above 
abundantly above all that you all you asked for was your stuff back. But God <laughs> says, I'm not just going to give you your stuff back. I'm giving it back to you with Come interest. Yes. I'm giving you more than what the enemy stole from you because it was illegal for him to take. When Come you on. got saved and you received salvation, there is a principle in salvation that means that you don't lose anything in the kingdom. Oh and so nothing that belongs to you has been lost. Nothing with your name on it. Nothing mm. that belongs to you has been taken that God is not going to restore. Yes. You, like David, are getting ready to pursue the enemy. We God. prophesy strength over you. We prophesy yes. wisdom over you. We prophesy yes. strategy over you. And we declare that this is the season where God has given you the kind of strategy that lets you go back into the enemy camp and win. Yes. Even like Gideon did. Yes. He says, you don't need as many people as you thought. And some of you are like, well, people walked away from me. I only have me. I don't have many people with me. But God says, you don't need as many people. He said, because me and you equals the majority. Yes. And so when God is on your team, when God is on your side, if God be for you, who can be against you? And so when you go back into the enemy's camp, you're not going with your own strength. You're not going with your might or your power. You're going with the strength and the power and the might of a holy God, a God who created everything, a God who is over everything, a God who is in everything. And when you come with that kind of power, I'm telling you, you cannot lose. There is no enemy, no assignment from hell, no witch, no warlock, no, uh, no, no word curse, nothing else that can come against you because the God of God and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with you and he has all the knowledge and all the strategy and so you can depend on God to give you strategy to give you wisdom and you can do, you, you can you can take that to the bank you that that check is going to cash because when God is with you there is no failure in God there is no losing in God so I'm telling you it's your turnaround season are you listening to me I need some people to understand My that God. to get that in their spirit because the enemy has been barring your mind Jesus. he's been barring your dreams he's been barring your visions and he has showed you being defeated but I'm telling you those dreams are not from God. The dreams that are coming to you, and I declare that dreams are coming to you, you're going to dream again. You're going to see again. Your vision is going to be increased again. You're getting ready to go to your next level again because this is your turnaround season. You are going to be victorious. Yes, you are yes. going to have the victory of God on your side. I'm telling you, it's your season. You got to receive that. Amen. Amen. Glory to your name. You got to receive Glory it. Glory to your name. You got to receive it. Hallelujah. Come on. You ought to just put yes. it in. It's my turnaround season. Yes. I'm going to yes. have dreams. I'm going to have yes. visions. I'm yes. not going to quit. Tamara right McNair now. Hicks is on here. She does dream interpretation, but you're going to have to flood her inbox so that you can tell her about the dreams that you're getting ready to have because yes. God's going to show on. you dreams of you being victorious. He's going to show you dreams with your hands lifted up at the finish line. He's going to show you dreams with you possessing the, the thing that the enemy took from you. You're going back and you're going to have the strength. I prophesy the strength of God upon you that yes. in the name of Jesus that no, no, no part of your body will be weak, that your mind will be strong, your yes. emotions will be strong, yes. your body will be strong. You'll have the tenacity and the strength and the energy to go forth and do all that you were called to do. You yes. better get in the gym. You better eat right because I'm telling you this is a My season God. that you're coming Come back. On. You're going and you're going to take back everything that belongs to you. You're going to have the strength to do it. You're going to have the anointing to do it. You're going to move in the power of God and there is no weapon that can form against you that can prosper. I'm telling you, you might as well lift your hands in victory and know that the God that you serve has already declared that you win. There is nothing that you lose in. That yes. There's nothing that you fail in. That everything that you put your hands to in this season, Jesus. you're going to win. This is your winning season and it's going to happen suddenly. Amen. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Some of you, the enemy came to steal your talents and your gifts and so you stopped using them and, and, and so you said, you know what, I'm just not going to worry about that. God said, go back and get your talent. Go back and get your gift so that it can be used for the kingdom so that it can bless not only just you, but so that it can bless the world. Amen. Some of you mm. stop singing. Some of you stop, um, stop writing. Some of you, my God, have stopped doing the very thing that God placed on the inside of you. And so there is, there is, there is, there is sometimes a, a, a deepness inside of you that's yearning to do, that's yearning. And, and so God saying, go back and get that. Go back and get your passion again. There, there, the, the passion that you once had, even for ministry, the passion that you once had for your business, it, it it seemed like it has, it has left you and the enemy came to steal it because again, he's not just concerned about stealing from you. He wants to literally destroy the destiny. He wants to destroy your dreams and your vision. He wants to destroy your family. And so you have to arise in power. You have to arise in the authority that you have given, even the authority that 
you let the enemy take from you, you got to go back and get that authority, that unused authority that God has placed on the inside of you. Glory to your name and, and be that be that voice. Come on. You got to be the voice. You got to tell the devil that he's a liar and he's the father of all lies. Even as I shared on yesterday, and, and we know the cliche, if a person will lie, what would they do? They will also steal. So the enemy comes to deceive you. He comes to deceive you with a lie so that he can steal from you. If you believe the lie of the enemy, he will steal your joy. He will steal your peace. He will steal your very family. You know, there is a scripture. I want to give you two more scriptures to put in your arsenal. Uh, but there are two scriptures that's going to bless your heart. The first one is, uh, is uh, Psalms chapter 137. Uh, verse number one through three. And the Bible says that by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the populace, for there our captors made us sing and our tormentors made us entertain, saying, sing unto us the songs of Zion. They had literally, because they were in Bab Babylon and they were in exile, and this is the children of Israel that we're referring to, they had literally hung up their harps. They said, I won't sing anymore. I won't, I, I won't worship God anymore. Mm -hmm. I won't play these instruments anymore. But God says there is a day coming and I'm, this is your season when you're getting ready to pick your heart back up and you're going to sing again and you're going to praise again and I'm going to give you, let me tell you there's another scripture that I began to look up Isaiah 61 and, and, and 3 and I love this, he says I'm going to give you beauty for your ashes, yes. I'm giving you the oil of joy for your morning, yes. I'm giving you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness oh, that you may co be called the tree of righteousness the planting of the Lord that God may be glorified and so I'm telling you that God is getting ready to give it to you you might as well shout now, you might as well scream now, you might as well go to the bank you might yes. as well go to your door and get ready for the doorbell to ring. Get on your phone and get ready for it to ring. Go to your mailbox. Get ready for the check to be delivered. I'm telling you, it's getting ready to happen for you because yes. God said, I'm giving you back your joy. I'm giving you back your excitement. I'm giving yes. you back your praise. This is the turnaround season for you. This is your makeup season. I'm getting ready to make up for you for everything that the enemy stole. Just like I did it for David. Just yes. like I did it for Abraham. Just like I've done it for others. Just like I did it for Lejean and Laura, yes. I'm getting ready to do it for you. Yes. So you might as well put your hands together and begin to praise God right where you at and honor Jesus. him and magnify him because I'm telling you, this is your turnaround season. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it felt like. I don't care what the enemy said. I don't care what was stolen. I don't care what the, the court said about it and the fact that it was stolen. I'm telling you, this is that season in your life where you're getting ready to get it all back. You might as well get ready, stand, Jesus. and be prepared because I'm telling you, you're getting ready to win. Amen. Amen. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing this. I want to try to see if this song is coming on because I think if this once this song comes on, it's going to seal it all for me. Uh, I was listening to this song the other day uh, and, and it just blessed my heart and I hope it blessed theirs. But I'm yes. telling you, you might as well get ready to win because this is your season for winning. Amen. Yes. Glory to your name. Glory to yes. your name. Yes. It's your season. You're gonna win big time. Check this out. Listen to what he said. Listen to what she said. This is Jacqueline Carr. Listen to this. The enemy came up against your home. The enemy came up against your home. The enemy came up against your children. The enemy came up against your children. The enemy came up against your land. The enemy came against you. The enemy came up against your child. Come on. You Our goal in this Periscope, Thank in this God. Facebook Live, Jesus. is that you know that you win. Woo. 
Jesus. Everything about you wins. Yes. Amen. You got to know that. It's, yes. it's my turnaround. It's my makeup season because yes. I'm going to win. Amen. 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 Well, listen, uh, I uh, we love you guys. Jesus. I'm excited. I'm really yes. excited about what God is doing in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hallelujah. You don't, you don't have to go into 2018 um, with a loss. That's it. God wants you to go in with a gain. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Absolutely. You, you're not going into 2018 with a loss. Uh-uh. No, God, no. You're going in with a gain. You're going into 2018. Thank you, Prophet Marcus. Yes. Glory to your name. God that is That was uh, Jacqueline Carr, You Will Win. Mm -hmm. I think that's the name of the song. I just peeled it up on, on YouTube. But uh, she's talking about the enemy came against your finance. He came against yes. your character. He came against your children. Your name. But yes. God, what did you say? God's getting ready to make up. Now, the scripture says... In 2 Chronicles 20 and 20, it said that the, the, the prophet was going out. He said, if you believe in God, you'll be established. He said, but if you believe in his prophets, you'll prosper. Let me tell you something. I want you to hear this prophetic word yes. from the prophet of God. Hear what she, what she said, because I believe that when prophets speak, we have to listen to it yes. and adhere to it and let it yes. bless our lives. And I'm telling yes. you, you got to know you're going to prosper when you hear this word from the prophet. I don't believe that was just a, you're not just a, you know, I have to realize that even in my life that you're not just an ordinary woman. You're not just an ordinary person. You're not just an ordinary somebody. No, you are a, a spokesperson for the Lord. You are an oracle of God. The Bible said, if any man speak, let him speak as, you know, as an oracle of God. So when you speak, when you opened up your mouth and you said that, that it's a turnaround season, if you've been behind in anything, you ought to then get in, get in position to know that you're going to receive everything that belongs to you. Right. If, you if there was any areas in your life where you, you felt like you were behind, yes. you needed acceleration, you needed expansion, you needed increase, you better know at that point that guess what? If I believe in God, I'll be established. And if I believe in the prophets, I'll prosper. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. God is speaking. Amen. God is speaking. And even you that are intercessors, we've got to birth forth that which God has spoken into the into the world, into the atmosphere. And so as God speaks his heart, as he reveals his heart to us, we got to be able to birth that thing through. We got to be able to travail and bring it forth out of the birthing canal into reality. Amen. We got to birth it. And so this is the time in the season. Um, and so I'm going to be announcing some things that we're going to be doing for those of you that were a part of of the prayer webinar um, and many of you said you wanted a group and so we're gonna we're gonna do that at the beginning starting the beginning of December and so I should we should have that information out um, between today and tomorrow but um, it's an exciting time it's an exciting time when you understand your kingdom rights when you understand when you fully come into the knowledge of who you are and who God is on the inside of you let me tell you, you are forced to be reckoned with when you understand the power of your praise when you understand the significance of your seed when God calls it and calls you calls for a seed there is something that he wants to do and he wants to bring forth in your life God never asks you for something without already having something to give you Wow, that's good. Amen. And, and so God is, we can never outgive the giver. So if God is asking you, you feel the need to praise, you better praise God like you've never praised him before. If there is something that, that is urging you and, and, and pushing you to sow a seed into something, whatever that is, sow that seed. Let me tell you, God is not trying to get something from you. He's using that as a way of obedience to him so that he can get something to you that you can't even imagine, something that you didn't even pray for. And so God wants to bless you in such an abundant way. If there is a there is a desire on the inside of you to serve in a capacity to do something for the kingdom of God, you've got to do it with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might because somebody's life depends on it. Hmm. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes. I'm so excited. Somebody's life depends on you. You guys get ready. You better Glory get ready. To God. I feel like you better get ready. I feel like running. I feel like shouting. I feel like leaping. I feel like leaping over a wall. I feel like running through troops. <laughs> hmm. Amen. Man, glory to God's God. Do it. Yes. He yes, is going to do it for yes, you. Just like yes. he did it for David, as mm. he did it for all these others. I'm telling you, uh, even matter of fact, let me give you one. Oh, my God. Let me give you yes. one last scripture. Come on. Come uh, on. Here is in Joel 2.25. I love this scripture. So I'll restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, my ar great army which I sent against you. You should eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. My people should never be put to shame. Then you should know that I, the Lord, am in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord your God.
God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Mm. And so, man, when I when I read Jesus. that, even though I know it was a situation that pertained to a circumstance that was going yeah. on in Israel, and it was written to Israel, yes. but we can take that same admonition, we can take that same excitement that we've gone through anything that's been challenging, we can take that as encouragement and know God, and we can claim and say, God, it's my turnaround season. It's the time when I'm going to recover all. It's the time when you're going to restore to me the years that have been eaten up, either, even if it was my failure, even if it was mistakes yes. that I made. Because yes. there were some decisions. Can I be honest? There was some decisions I made mm -hmm. that were not in alignment with the will of God for my life that mm -hmm. caused the enemy in my situation to have a legal right to come at me. Right. But even in that, God still says, I can, if you will repent and get back into mm -hmm. alignment, I can cause your, I can cause your situation to turn around. Yes. That's what Second Chronicles 7 and 14 is. It's, mm. it's about turnaround. It's yes. about restoring the years, yes. restoring favor, restoring yes. strength. It's about releasing back to me that which was either stolen or that which was taken because I wasn't in place that I was supposed to be in. Yes. My yes. God. Even those things that have been forfeited. That's it. You know? That's it. That, that we didn't That's use, it. things that we didn't use, things that we took for granted. God said, go get your stuff. Go get your stuff. Go get your stuff. Yes. Hallelujah. God gave it to you and it's yours. It's yours. And declare it's mine and I'm going to get it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. You know, there was a, there was a there was a there was an organization, a couple of different organizations. Um, I think one of them is called lostmoney.com. Mm. And sometimes we don't even know we have stuff. So so you know, I've gone on there and I found some things. I even let me tell you, I even found money for somebody else. Mm. And they didn't even know belong to them. They didn't even them. know belong to them. They didn't even know belong to them. I said, you got to go get your stuff. You got to fill out this form. And they sent them their money. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> I feel the glory. Yeah, when you go into the devil's storehouse, you're going to find that you're going to not only see your stuff that the devil stole, but you're going to find other people's stuff that the devil stole. I'm sure you've seen it in a movie where um, the police goes and, and you know into this place and they're looking for um, stolen goods. And not only do they find what they're looking for, but they find all kind of stuff. They find other people's stuff. Amen. And so that's what God is saying. He said, not only are you going to find your stuff, not only are you going to recover of your stuff, but you're going to recover somebody else's stuff. Yes. Because you know what? When David recovered all, mm -hmm. the, the Amalekites, the Israelites were not the only ones that they had raided. Mm -hmm. And so there were other nations <laughs> that had been raided as well. Yes. And so although David recovered his stuff, mm -hmm. he got his stuff and the stuff that they had stolen from other people. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to get yours back. Yes. With restitution. <laughs> with restitution. With restitution. With, it's yes. going to be re restoration with yes. restitution in this yes. season. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, listen, listen. We love you guys. Um, you know, I sometimes feel bad, but I I, 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 I guess I shouldn't feel bad. And, and let me tell you sometimes why I feel bad announcing products. Like we don't we don't talk about our, our anointing oils, and we know this stuff works. We right. don't talk about we don't talk about the book. We don't talk about that stuff because I don't want every time we come on for us to seem as if though we're we're trying to sell something. Because I see people doing that, and it just bothers me. I, I don't we don't ask for seeds unless we really know that God is saying something. But um, you, you know, I wanted to definitely make mention of the fact that we are doing our Leadership 103, the webinar, it's going to be well worth the investment and it's going to be on, on December 2nd and the 9th, so we still got a couple of weeks, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and um, we're going to help you develop your business. Out of that, I really want to see the people that are really interested because once we get the right people, we're going to mentor those people. We're going to yes. help them develop things uh, just as we develop things and, uh, and I know God has given us a green thumb and an anointing to really be able to help people break through in those areas. Yes. And yes. then the next one that comes up is developing the right teams, building effective teams. And uh, I think that, you know, I was, I was telling the leader the other day, I said, you got the anointing. It's not the anointing that you're missing. It's the leadership portions that you're yes. missing to really yes. be able to tap into it. Absolutely. And so we want to help bless people and, uh, and minister to people in those categories. Listen, we are not going to stay on here. We're not going to belabor the point, but we love you. Love you We're going to try to get here for midnight. Um, because we, um, I just really think that it's a time and it's a season where we just really got to press with the people of God. Amen. Right. Absolutely. Amen.
Absolutely. Well, we certainly love you guys. Um, come back at midnight. We're going to cry out. I mean, we're going to bombard heaven. We're going to decree and declare God's word. We're going to see the manifestation of God's word manifest in your life. Um, and you're going to testify. Amen. Even later on this week, you're going to testify of the things that God did today. Hallelujah. So get ready, get ready, get ready for your testimony. Get ready um, to, to write a post. Get ready. Amen. To send an email. Get ready to make a phone call because God is about to show out in your life on this week. Amen. And so we bless the Lord for you guys. Love you so much. See you at midnight.